All right, everybody, and we're back. Oh, man, we're back, we're back. College football for week 11 was epic, was epic, it was great, man. And we're going to really dive into it, so we're going to cover a lot of things, especially a big shocker for you. I know you see the background. You got that upcoming game, Michigan versus Ohio State. Decide, in fact, who's going to the playoffs or not. Still might get both of them in, just depending on how they perform in this game and in the Big Ten Championship. But we're going to really cover a Tennessee embarrassing loss. TCU with their magical wins, as usual. The top four teams doing with struggling, you know, to win, but they're getting the wins. Uh, Another, you know, big upsets, you know, Arkansas knocking off Ole Miss. North Carolina falling to Georgia Tech. And so forth and so forth. And Vanderbilt beating Florida. All right. So let's go ahead and time in. So starting off right at the back. First, want to give a uh, quick shout out to uh, Jackson State. They are undefeated. 11-0 under Deion Sanders. Second year, yeah. Year two. Undefeated. Still not getting their recognition. Got their recognition with college game day coming in town. But that's about it. Uh, but shout out to them, man. They're doing their thing, man. Congratulations. Uh, you know, Travis Hunter playing both sides of the field. Sure, Sanders is looking good. I know everybody said he should be in the uh, race for the Heisman. But I don't know, man. You know, hell, the Heisman even – you don't have a lot of good quarterbacks in the Heisman anyway. So, hell, just put him in there and see what happens. But uh, congratulations to Jackson State, man. They're doing their thing, 11-0. Grind it out, man. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it some more. So, TCU with their magical wins. If nobody didn't get to see that game. You should have watched it. TCU has – and continues to do what they do best, pull out the win when needed. Uh, they are playing with fire. I, I will tell you that they are playing with fire, a lot of fire. Uh, you know, you know, the grease is hot. It's just a matter of time to where somebody's going to throw something in there that's going to explode, and that's what's going to happen to TCU. But this is not the this is not the episode where we're going to trash talk TCU. We're going to give them their flowers and congratulations to TCU. You're eleven and zero. I think this is the second time in their uh, school's program history going eleven and zero. Uh, they're ready. They clinched their, uh, you know, opportunity to go to the championship, the Big 12 championship last week. So most likely they pretty much come down between, I think it's Kansas State. or oh, I forgot who else is the next runner up. It's Kansas State or something like that. Now, TCU does have their last game against you, which is against Iowa State. And the way they're playing, they're going to have another close game. They just can't lose this game. TCU could not, and I repeat, cannot lose a game if they want to get into the college football play playoff. All right. The first year head coach doing a phenomenal job, phenomenal job. Now, he's been a head coach once before, so this isn't new to him. But Sonny Dykes is doing a hell of a job. He should get coach of the year. I don't care. He should get coach of the year. He should give it to him or maybe the UConn coach. But give Sonny Dykes should get it for what he's done with that program, taking him 11 and 0 in his first year. Give it to him. Uh, he's got Duggan out there looking like an elite starter. He won't be a starter in the NFL, but TCU, great game, man. Uh, you know, I mean, especially with just running the ball, getting up there 13 seconds left on the clock to get the kicking unit out there on the field with the kicker rushing to get out there on the field and get it all the way down to three seconds just to kick it and, and, get, and win that game in Baylor. Man, who would have thought? If you watch that game and you see the way it was going, you would have thought, all right, Bears about to just slow him down, hold him down to this, and it's going to be a big upset, and TCU will be out of the playoffs. But, hey, this is November, and this is what happens in November. But TCU said, what? We're not going to be a victim of November. Still got one more weekend left. Um, so, you know, you really don't know how November is going to turn out, but TCU was doing that thing. Congratulations to him, man. With that game right there, it was a good one, man. They pulled it off. Max Duggan did his thing. Uh, you know, Baylor gave him everything they could have could have handled. Baylor gave him everything they could have handled. Uh, and Baylor's a real good team. You know, they beat Baylor at Baylor, you know, by one point. Baylor is uh, it's not an elite team. It's not the same Baylor team from last year. Let's keep that in mind. It's not the same Baylor team from last year. It's definitely not. You could tell us it's night and day. What they did last year and what they're doing in this year is completely different. Uh, this Baylor team has only won, you know, six games. They're going bowling, but this is not the same Baylor team that, um, you know, did what they did last year. This is not, uh, you know, they'll bounce back, you know, two years from now, but this is not the same Baylor team. Schools like Baylor, TCU, they need building seasons. They're not like Ohio State's, Clemson's, Georgia's, Alabama's, 
hell, you know, those big programs where they just reload, they got to rebuild. But TCU candidate went in, went into Baylor and beat Baylor by one point. They almost lost, but they didn't. And congratulations to him, man. Uh, you know, now one thing I will say is that Baylor, not Baylor, TCU needs to be careful. Uh, you know, they got Iowa State coming in town. Uh, and, you know, granted, you know, this right here is it's not going to be a – I mean, on paper, they should win. You know, Iowa State is four and seven, so they should win. You know, the, the quarterback for Iowa State has thrown 13 interceptions all season long compared to Max Duggan, which is his three. So, on paper, man, stats – TCU should win, but as what, but as what we've seen all year long from TCU is they either have to be coming back in the late in the fourth quarter to win, or they're playing these back and forth shootouts. Haven't had they haven't had a few, you know. They, I mean, they dominated some teams, but they haven't had a lot of them. They've been a lot of close battles, and you know what? Iowa State coming to town, they have nothing to lose. They're not going bowling. They're not going to do anything. They're four and seven. They have nothing to lose. So they're not going to come out there just to lay down. They're going to come out there and want to win a game. They want to spoil your party. So TCU better stay woke because, uh, you know, we just seen what happened to Tennessee when they went to South Carolina. Uh, this game right here is at 4 p.m. So this is right here. It's another one. It's a 4 p.m. at home, but this is a 4 p.m. game. Uh, this right here can, you know, well, it's a 3 o'clock game if you're talking uh, t Texas time. Uh, but we're saying Eastern time, but, you know, still it's a later game. You know, you got to wait, you know, these type of games, you want to get them started and get them over with quick because whoever TCU has to face, they're going to have to be ready to face them. They're going to have to be ready and prime and ready to go. Uh, Cause at this point right now, it's looking like it's going to, they're going to be playing against uh, Kansas state, which uh, Kansas state has Kansas coming in town and Kansas just really got embarrassed by Texas. I think it was like 44 to 13. So, uh, you know, Kansas, you know, Kansas State has the opportunity to go, you know, nine and uh, nine and three, improve, get a good, decent um, bowl game. And, uh, you know, hopefully to go face Kansas State for, you know, and go face Kansas State and TC. Kansas State is looking to go face TCU for a rematch, uh, you know, so they can get that win back. So this would be a good one. But congratulations to TCU for what they did. Keep it up, man. You, you know, congratulations. Y'all did a hell of a job. Now let's talk about Michigan. So Michigan, in which, like I said, we got the banner back there in the back. Michigan won against Illinois, but, man, this was a tough win. Uh, I'm not even going to call it a struggle win. It was a tough win. Illinois is ranked number three overall defense. So you knew this was going to be a tough win. You, you know, I think Michigan even knew it. Going into this game is going to be a tough win. And at one point, Michigan was losing against Illinois. Illinois just doesn't have the same – athletes and depth like illinois does michigan just doesn't have it i mean i mean vice versa whoa what i meant to say is that illinois doesn't have the same depth as michigan they just don't they couldn't you know they can't keep up with it four quarters just like how michigan can um you know that and that's what you know helped out illinois a lot was you know beating up on teams getting up on them early and resting uh you know and just playing murder ball you know you can't play murder ball with michigan because they're going to do the same thing. It's just that they can keep rotating. Uh, so, you know, Michigan came out very well in this game. Uh, the big concern for me for Michigan is that you're going against Ohio State. J.J. McCarthy, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I had, a, you know, not a lot of promises for J.J. McCarthy, but I do know he's better than the quarterback that they do have behind him. Uh, but J.J. McCarthy, uh, you know, I think it's one of the situations where they have ran the ball so much and so long to the point where now you're going to ask J.J. McCarthy with a cold arm to start bailing you out. And next week they have Ohio State. They're going to Ohio State. 12 o'clock game. That's going to be – you're going to ask J.J. McCarthy to put the game on his back. Because trust me, because with Blake Corman out, uh, you know, right now it's ain't just the ankle, but when it comes to running backs in the ankles, you need them to be healthy. In this game right here, you're going to need Corman to be healthy. He is up in the runners-up for the Heisman Trophy. Granted, and like I say, this is a quarterback's trophy. This, I, I don't care what nobody say. The Heisman is for quarterbacks. Just call it what it is. Just call it a quarterback's trophy. Don't call it a Heisman Trophy because there's nobody else that can get it but quarterbacks. Wide receivers occasionally, running backs sometimes. But anybody else, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, linebackers, 
wide receivers, it doesn't, you know, I'm not a linebacker, wide receivers, uh, cornerbacks, they don't get it. But Heisman Trophy solely goes to quarterbacks, and, you know, a quarterback can get two or three trophies in one time. You know, it's just – it is what it is. But for Blake Corman, um, you know, Michigan, I'm mean, at this point, they're going to really – need Cormant to be able to uh, be healthy to come into this game. They're going to really be counting on him to be ready for this game because they got to go play Ohio State. And Ohio State's defense is definitely starting to click under Jim Knowles in first year. You see what Jim Knowles did, did with Oklahoma State, and now you see what Oklahoma State's looking like. They got embarrassed by Oklahoma. Embarrassed. This is the same Oklahoma that got the doors blown off by Texas, and they got their head split by Kansas. You know, so for Oklahoma State to lose like they did to um, Oklahoma, the way Oklahoma just going on, it just lets you know the defense just dropped off after Jim Knowles left. And you see how the Ohio State defense has picked up since Jim Knowles came. And this right here is a big pickup for Ryan Day. This is a great hire for Ryan Day because this is the game that's going to help Ohio State. With Jim Knowles being on, this is the biggest hire for Jim uh, for uh, Ryan Day. This hire was a game changer. You might not have seen it in a regular season, but these games right here and in the playoffs, it's going to come down to it. And this is this is what it's going to be. So for Michigan, I don't know what to say about Michigan. You know, great win on behalf of that. You know, excellent win, but you struggle on it. You're not going to say you struggle. It was a tough win. You had to fight to get that win. You had to claw, spit, scream, and everything just to get that win. And then you had some. You had to barely, you know, hang on to J.J. McCarthy, you know, <laughs> For his arm, you know, and, you know, J.J. McCarthy is just he went 18 for 34, 208 yards, no touchdowns, no interception. He had a 46.7 QBR rating. That's not going to do it against Ohio State. It's just not. And, you know, I know I said that C.J. Stroud is going to be the runner up for the, the Heisman. Tell me another quarterback that out there that looking better than him. Well, Caleb Williams. You know, Caleb Williams, but that's it. There's no real solidified, like no Bryce Young or Joe Borrow at the time or Mac Jones, you know, solidify, you know, quarterbacks in that, you know, in that year. You know, Joe Borrow solidified himself as the Heisman. Uh, you know, Bryce Young solidified himself as the Heisman last year. Um, and, and the list continues to go on and go on and so far on. Uh, so, you know, Trevor Lawrence solidified himself as a Heisman. I think he did. I'll go back on that one. But – my point is that is that in this uh, Heisman race, there's no real clutch. I think you know Caleb Williams does have the opportunity to creep his way back into it to uh, to actually win it because we saw what happened with North Carolina when they played Georgia Tech, and we'll get to that one later on in the show. But right now, for Michigan, you need to figure something out because JJ McCarthy is not ready to put this team on his back. Blake Corman can, uh, your other running back can, uh, Edwards he can. But you you you're better with your two your one two punch, you know. Get Blake Corman running, get him up, gashing the team, and come back behind with that bruiser. And let that bruiser dominate, and let that offensive line continue to just smash mouth foot, uh, football running up and down the field. Uh, and that's going to be their bread and butter uh, for Michigan. Uh, but we'll see. But congratulations to Michigan. Uh, you did get the win. You didn't lose like another team we're going to talk about. Uh, but, you know, congratulations on that behalf. And keep up the good work. You did your thing. All right, let's, let's keep it moving. Uh, I don't know if anybody get to see, but, you know, Ohio State versus Maryland. Yeah, I know it said it was 43 to 30, but that game was a lot closer than what it was. And this is just another thing, uh, like I talked about with Michigan, that was a tough win. It wasn't a struggle win. It was a tough fought win. And it was a conference win. This is when you start playing in your conference, the level starts to change. Maryland, are they on the same level as Ohio State? No, but Ohio State is going to get the best of Maryland. Maryland's going to come out there and play to their best ability to beat you. Why? Because they want to prove something. They're not going to downplay you. You might want to, you might want to play down to their level, but they're not going to play to your level. They're going to try to outplay your level. And that's what that's what really happened. I mean, now a lot of things could have went Maryland's way. Some questionable calls, some pass interference calls, which I do understand with the Maryland's head coach. That 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 pass interference call was very questionable. Uh very questionable. Because I mean, you see these kind of holdings from you know DB, especially when they wrap their arms around the around the waist or whatever to try to, you know, bat the ball down. You see that in the NFL. Some of these calls, man, are costing a lot of teams a lot of games. Um, but, you know, like Brett 
Billman says the game was rigged <laughs> when he played Michigan. Uh, but, you know, I think Ohio State for them, uh, CJ Stroud isn't looking like the Heisman run, uh, front runner. Uh, he's going to, I mean, at this point, he can win it. I don't see him unless Caleb Woods come out and has another uh, magnificent game and continues to do what he does best, put the team on his back. But, uh, you know, CJ Stroud is at this point, they asking him to do a lot. They don't have Ohio State's missing some, they're missing key running backs. They're down like two running backs, I believe, two starting running backs. Travion Henderson, another running back. They're down. So now you're asking for the wide receivers to step up, which it isn't going to be bad. You can go spread, spread, spread. But once the a defense starts locking that down and shuts down that, that spread, spread, spread the ball all around, you're going to have to eventually run the ball. That's the only way you can keep defenses honest. You got to get them. You got to start running the ball. Get them defensive linemen held up instead of just rushing all the time. You have to run the ball. Uh, but we'll see how Ohio State plays out. But overall, for Ohio State, you know, they did their thing. They came back and won that late, you know, sack where it ended up being an a, a interception and return for a pick six by a defensive lineman. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know if anybody is not talking about it, but TJ on Ohio State's uh, defensive line is showing out. Remember, this recruit, he went the whole 2020 COVID year without signing, went into the 2021, continued to do his recruiting, continued to go up and down, figuring out where he wanted to go to his visits in 2021, even though he was supposed to be with the 2020 class, signed with Ohio State, and look what he's doing this year. He's showing out. He had a you know phenomenal game two, three weeks ago, and he's doing his thing. He's coming in clutch. And I think this right here is going to be the big deciding factor for uh, Ohio State when they play Michigan. Uh, you know, my pick is in, I, you know, if Michigan was – if Blake Corman didn't go down and if J.J. McCarthy was looking a whole lot better than when he's looking now, I would lean to Michigan a chance to beat Ohio State. But with the running back down, J.J. McCarthy's a little questionable. You know, I don't think Michigan's uh, DBs have seen this kind of wide receiver play yet. It's, it's not going to – I don't think it's going to be a blowout. But I don't see Michigan winning this game. I'm leaning more to Ohio State. But Ohio State did do their thing. They did turn out and, you know, you know, shut down, you know, went clutch. And they, you know, put Maryland away late in the third quarter, like 38, I mean, the fourth quarter, like, I think it was like 43 seconds or whatever it was. But they did get the win. So congratulations to Ohio State. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Um, Clemson embarrassed Miami. All right, look, uh, I want to talk about this real quick. And I'm not talking about Clemson. I'm talking about Miami. Miami fans, all the rings that you won were a long time ago, man. You won rings years ago. Stop living in the past and move forward. Those five championships that you have don't have no relevancy. It, it just doesn't hold no weight in this era. For the kids in this era, it doesn't hold any weight. If you want the kids to get y'all back to the – to the Miami Hurricanes that you once were, you need to get them to understand. Quit trying to compare them to the past. It, it, they, they're not going to be the past. They are who they are this era. You need to get them to play to the skill sets that you need them to play. And for Miami, it's going to be a while today bounce back. That's how I feel. It's going to be a while. They need to trust Mario Cristobal. I don't know how many head coaches that they ran through, but, you know, before Mark Rick, they ran another coach out. When Mark Rick get there, they run him out. Then you get – uh, uh I've got his – dang on that, a defensive coordinator who was there who left to go take a job at Temple and then came back when Miami job came open. Y'all ran him up out of there. What you going to do with Mario Cristobal? Don't run him up out of there. He's a great recruiter. Allow him to do his thing, man. Allow him to do his thing. But uh, Miami, you got a long ways to go. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Penn State did their thing. They won. They beat Rutgers. North Carolina State lost to Louisville. No, Louisville is uh, Louisville. Uh, you know, I still think the head coach is still in a little hot seat, even though he's winning games. You know, North Carolina State isn't the same North Carolina State that we've seen. You know, the defense isn't the same. It's just not the same. All right. Yeah, I'm just putting that out there. I don't want to want everybody's thinking that Louisville is dominating. They doing this and that and blah, blah, blah. You know, Leary isn't playing. It's not the same North Carolina State. All right. So let's just hang that up. Um, you know, Georgia did a thing. I want to touch on Georgia. All right. It was 16-6 to six win for Georgia. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, oh, there's an ugly win, this and that. Georgia turned off early. I think, you know, 
Kirby Smart, you know, Todd Munkin seeing that Stetson Bennett just couldn't get the ball passed. I mean, two tight ends, like the one tight end was wide open, easy touchdown. He overthrew him, still overthrew him. The kid is six foot seven. Look, I like Stetson Bennett, and it's a great story. But I've been very advocate about how I feel about Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett is who he is. All right. He's always going to think he can do more than what than what anybody says that he can. But Stetson Bennett is who he is. This is about as much as you're going to get at him. After this college year, I don't know where else he's going to go. This is about as much as you're going to get at him. At the college, after this college year, he's done. That's it. I, I don't know what else he's going to do. He can go for the NFL, he can go for the XFL, he can go for Canadian football, but this is about as far as you're going to get, man. This is He's not the guy that can ex execute at that level. He's the type of quarterback that you need to put him in a system and tell him, look, you throw the ball here. If he's open, you throw it here. If he's not open, you don't, you don't throw, you throw it here. He doesn't, like, you know, I watched that game. I'm a big Georgia fan, so, of course, I watched that game a lot. Uh, man, it's just, you know, throwing in the double coverage. He's been doing this for the past three last weeks, and I know the coaches are telling him, stop throwing the double coverage, and he keeps thinking he can just thread a needle. Look. He's at the Heisman race. He just needs to realize, all right, I'm not going to get in the Heisman. Just, just play your game. Don't cost us a game. And, I mean, you know, Kirby Smart now, they just told the defense, slow it down. Let's end it up, and let's move from there. And I think that's what happened. So, um, for Georgia, you know, good win, a good fought win. But, you know, Kirby Smart turned it off. We're not going to be risking nobody getting injured. They just slowed it down. We're going to run the ball. This is what we're going to do. And I think they're gonna they might do the same thing when they play Georgia Tech next week. Try to get up early, fast, get up out of there so they can get ready for LSU. Uh, and that's gonna be the challenge because LSU's gonna come and play. They're gonna come and play something serious. Uh, but you know, congratulations to Georgia on that behalf, you know, getting their win there. Uh some more games. Um, you know, Alabama beat Austin P. Whoopie dee doo. Congratulations. Florida State beat up on Louisiana. Which uh, you know, good job for Florida State because you know they got Florida in this weekend. They are going to, I don't know, but they are going to beat Florida. You know, they they they're definitely going to beat Florida. Um, I wasn't surprised. Uh, I'm not gonna say I wasn't surprised. I was surprised that Florida lost, but you know, I don't know what to say about Florida. I mean, they've been losing very questionable games. I don't know what to say about them. You know, the beginning of the week they beat Utah, real good game. And then that was it. That's all you got. Then, it, you know, that's it. You didn't get nothing else from Florida. That was it. Uh, you know, Florida just – it's just Florida. And it's Billy Napier's first year, so I'm not going to really say too much. I just know that in your first year, yes, it's your first year head coach, but there's some games, there's some teams you just shouldn't lose to because you definitely have way more talent. You shouldn't be losing to Florida. I mean, you shouldn't be losing to Vanderbilt. Um, let's go ahead and get to the nitty-gritty. I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. South Carolina and Barris, Tennessee. Before I go any further, um, you know, big prayers to the young kid, Hinder Hooker, uh, for what he's did for Tennessee. Uh, congratulations to him for everything that he's done. Um, he's definitely led this team to a big magical season. I mean, he was doing it last year. So, you know, just for him coming back into this system again this year, uh, he changed it all around. Uh, so, you know, big improvements, uh, you know, for what he's did, put Tennessee in a position to the opportunity to get to the playoffs. Uh, it's a tough loss. It's a tough way for a young kid like yourself to go out the way he did. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, when the reports came out, he had a, I believe it was an ACL tear or, or in the knee or MCL. So I, his career, and for college football, his career is done. Uh, you know, he at this point, he's just getting, he goes and move on, get ready for the NFL, get this surgery and prep for that and go into recovery. Uh, but, you know, you know, sorry for the young man for the way he had to go out. I don't think this is the way he planned for it to go out. I think he wanted to go out a lot stronger. Uh, but, you know, he's going out on a good note. Uh, he's, he's definitely going to be in Tennessee's uh, books of Hall of Fame. I can promise you that much. But let's get back to this embarrassing loss. Uh, South Carolina, Spencer Rattler looked like the Spencer Rattler everybody thought he was going to be when he came out of high school. The man had seven. They had seven touchdowns. I think he had six of them. They got the tight end out there doing a running back because they, I mean, South Carolina is depleted. And they still beat Tennessee. They torched Tennessee's defense, which it should not be a shocker. This is the same 
defense that's been getting torched all year long. South Carolina saw what Georgia did, and they took that same playbook defensively, and they did the same thing. Beat us underneath, and let's see what you can do once you get closer to the uh, red zone. And that's it. That's it. It's just all about speed. We have faster players that will, all right, no problem. You can get them six, seven yards. You're not going to get a first down. They made Tennessee work for every down. Um, you know, the way Tennessee got embarrassed and in a way that South Carolina kept rubbing salt on the wound, even though they were up, they still went to pass again. They said, we're going to kill you. We're going to cut the head off the dragon. And that's what they did. They cut the head off the dragon. Tennessee playoff hopes done. New Year's Six Bowl done. I don't even know if they even, you know, at this point, is Tennessee even going to wake up to want to play Vanderbilt? That's a big question. Are they going to wake up to want to play Vanderbilt? I don't think they want to play Vanderbilt. I don't know, man. You, at this point, it's like, do them young men really want to keep going, especially the ones that have opportunity to go to the NFL, like, a, you know, Tillman. Is he still going to want to continue to play? Or is he going to just go ahead and opt out? You know, is he going to want to just sit out? You know, it's, it's just all this, you know, the whole thing by Jeremy Banks. Why, is, why wasn't he on the field? A lot of starters. Why weren't they on the field playing? Um, you know, and at one minute, if anybody watched that game, you know, Tennessee scores late going into the second, uh, going to the second half, come out, the game was, you know, Tennessee was just down 35 to 31. I stepped away from the team and I was like, okay, all right, well, South Carolina's about to just blow this game away and Tennessee gonna come back and win. And, you know, you know, it was, it was, you know, it had been like, oh man, we thought Tennessee was down, but then we see the magical Tennessee. It didn't, nope. South Carolina said, nope, you're not, you're not, no, we're going to continue to smash mouth. You know, Cam Smith, for the DB at South Carolina, uh, look, if he's not a first-round pick, I don't know what else. Uh, there's, there's another, you know, Cart Phillips, he's good for Utah. So he he definitely could be a um, a first-round pick. There's some good DBs coming out. Keely Ringo, there's a lot of good DBs coming out this year. Uh, there's one for Illinois. I forgot that young man's name. But there's a lot of good DBs coming out. But Cam Smith, man, the way the, the things that he did uh, to, to cover, he didn't cover just not one wide receiver he covered two he did he was covering chat he was covering tillman and he was covering height so he was doing two things you know even with south carolina losing their their head hunter on that targeting call it still didn't slow him down they still were out there fighting grinding even putting that freshman out there in safety and they still were doing their thing so uh you know shout out big shout out to south carolina man you know i know that you know columbia south carolina just turn up probably if you anybody see the pictures, they tore up the, the bushes rushing the field. Just tore up the bushes. I mean, them, them hedges, it's going to take years for those hedges to grow back. You know, that school probably would just rip those up out from out the ground, just plant some new ones and call it a day. Ain't no point to try to make them grow back. But um, congratulations to South Carolina. Tough loss for Tennessee. Uh, you know, I mean, they were about to make history. And for it to end like this for Josh Hypo in that school, it's a tough one, man. Look, uh, you know, and, you know, shout out to Josh Hypo for doing what he did in year two. Um, but this is where I stand with Josh Hypo. That offense that he has, he's playing it in the SEC. This is a very tough conference for him to play in with that kind of offense. It's going to continue to get shut down year after year. It's the same thing with uh, what um, oh, what's that guy at Mississippi State. Forgot his name, but at Mississippi State, that same offense that they have is getting shut down year after year year this is the sec where the defense is it, this is what it, the sec is built on defense defense this is what we predicate ourselves on defense that josh josh hypo offense that little you know 11 plays i think that's what the commentator was saying that was just 11 play playbook and you know once they get a play done they look on the sideline and whatever number gets thrown out there that's what they look at their wrists and oh that's the play we're going to run and that's it I don't know what Josh, Josh Hypo either need to figure something out, change his playbook up, get a new offensive coordinator in here, or he can stick with that and he's going to find himself going to another school. It's not going to last here. And uh, it's not going to last in the SEC. It's, it's going to get shut down. And you got to play Georgia every year. You got to play South Carolina every year. So now they know your playbook. They got it down pat. They know it's going to be a hurry up offense. Yeah, they only play you once a year, but they know what it is. So they're going to continue to prep for it. You know, Florida's going to continue to recruit. So if Florida gets back clicking, Tennessee's going to go back into the Stone Age. All right? I, I can see it. Look, it's going to be a regression season for Tennessee next year. Hook is gone. Uh, the young man that's stepping in with a cannon. 
you know, he's a transfer from Michigan. He got injured and the hooker stepped in. He took over the job. But Joe Milton the third has a cannon. How he's going to do going forward, we'll see when they go play against Vanderbilt. Uh, it's going to be a lot of rust on him. But we'll see how he's going to do when he goes plays against Vanderbilt. But congratulations to South Carolina. Y'all did y'all thing. Beat up on Tennessee. Uh, real quick, Um, also, uh, I'm not letting this slide. I got to find my, got my little notes here. Georgia Tech beat North Carolina. The Tar Heels. Mac Brown. Defense. And look, I, I don't want to hear nothing. This is unexcusable. Now, you know, Georgia playing Georgia, I mean, Georgia played Georgia Tech this weekend. Trust me, Georgia Tech has, I mean, jo Georgia Tech now has Georgia full attention. You think Georgia's going to let that slide? No, you got Georgia's full attention. Uh, but Georgia Tech beat North Carolina with backup quarterbacks. Jeff Sims is injured, and he's been out for pretty much the whole season, and he's not going to start this season. He's not going to start the last game of the season. He's out. Georgia Tech beat North Carolina with two backup quarterbacks. Let that sink in. An interim head coach. For North Carolina, Mac Brown, I don't know what to tell him. I don't know what to say. Um, this right here is, another, is just another disappointing season for another program. You know, they've gone 9 and 2. They should never lost to. Georgia Tech. You should never lost to Georgia Tech. It just you, you, I don't know why you're losing to Georgia Tech. You should never lost to Georgia Tech. Only, play, only game they should have lost to was Notre Dame. That's fine. You lose to Notre Dame. No problem. Even though Notre Dame lost to Marshall, Notre Dame started to turn around and bounce back and they, and they get things clicking. All right, that's the only loss you should have. You should not have lost to Georgia Tech. I don't care. I don't care whatever the circumstances are. You should never have lost to Georgia Tech. You got Drake Mays, and Drake Mays didn't have a great game himself. This man went 16 for 30, 202 yards, 6.7 um, yards average, one interception. He did not show up. He is not a Heisman contender in that. Try again next year, young man. Uh, so, you know, the running game, you know, Green showed up, 92, 92 yards. You know, his longest was 80. So he pretty much didn't do nothing. If his, long, if his longest was 80 yards and he, averaged, he got 92 yards, Georgia Tech shut down North Carolina. They shut him down. And they were beating up on North Carolina all game long. That's what happened. Georgia Tech was beating up on North Carolina all game long. You, I don't care what the fans got to say. You don't lose to a team that you're supposed to beat. You're supposed to dominate these teams. You know, like Tennessee is it's different. It's Tennessee's playing against South Carolina. You ask South Carolina to go play Georgia Tech, they hanging up some points on Georgia Tech. I can promise you this. You, you tell a lot of teams who play Georgia Tech, they're hanging up some points. You've already seen it all season long. Um, but, you know, congratulations to Georgia Tech. You know, Georgia Tech is they, – they're winning. If you look at Georgia Tech's last couple of games, they're winning. They're, they're doing a hell of a job. Like, they're – let me see if I can pull up my notes real quick. Bear with me. But Georgia Tech is doing a hell of a job. I mean, look at it. Look. They beat North Carolina. They lost to Miami, but they beat Virginia Tech. They lost to Florida. Then they beat. Uh, then they lost to Virginia. They beat uh, Duke. They beat Pitt. You see, it's just they're doing some things now. When they played Ole Miss, they got blown out. But it's Ole Miss. Georgia Tech is a is a school that's. I don't know if it's a rebuild or I don't know what it is. It's not a reload. It's just, I don't know if it's a rebuild. I don't know what it is. Is you know demolition. Start over, you know, destroy this building and go build a new one. So, uh, but congratulations to Georgia Tech on your win against North Carolina, knock North Carolina out. So if they even had any playoff hopes, done. North Carolina did. If North Carolina has some playoff hopes, it's done. With Tennessee losing, if North Carolina would have won, that would have kept them moving up. Nope. Done. Done. <clears throat> Uh, we already covered Oklahoma, embarrassing Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is done. Uh, you know, Mike Gundy might just leave Oklahoma State. He's been there for I don't know how long. He needs to do what Brian Kelly did, get gone. Brian Kelly knew it. Brian Kelly was like, look, I can win 10 games and I can get to the playoffs, but I won't win a national championship because he's limited. He was limited at Notre Dame. I don't want to hear Notre Dame won championships in the past. This is get out the past, people. We're talking about modern era football. 
So Mike Gundy, he needs to leave Oklahoma State. He's not going to get the recruits for the way he wants to play his football. He's not going to be able to pull them in. He's going to – yes, he can pull them in and then get them up and, you know, mold them and get them up to speed and, you know, develop them. But that's three, four years of development. So that means you got to go three, four years of disappointing seasons and loss and heartbreaks. Regression. That's what they're doing, going going backwards, going in reverse. Uh, and that's just what's all that's happened. They're going in reverse. Uh, so I don't know what to say about Oklahoma. Um, Arkansas beat Ole Miss. Uh, you know, congratulations to Sam Pittman. He, you know, he continues to find ways to show that Arkansas is still here to stay. Uh, Arkansas is not having the great season that they planned based off what they did last year and the year before. But Arkansas ha- is starting to, you know, turn it around. They can continue to be in a build. I ain't going to say rebuild. They're building. At this point, they're building. So next year, they might do something. Who knows? It just depends on their quarterback and what they're working with and how their quarterback pans out. Because, uh, you know, the quarterback that they do have, he's going to the NFL. He came back this year and didn't turn out the way that he want. But, you know, K.J. Jefferson is going to continue to do his thing. Ole Miss, on the other hand, I think Lane Kiffin has checked out. Uh, there's rumors that he's actually going to Auburn. Uh, and there's also a rumor that just came out that he's uh, his last game. He will not be coaching the uh, game Friday. This coming Friday, I don't know uh, if it's official yet or whatnot, but there's a rumor that he's not coaching that game on Friday, that Egg Bowl, and he will be heading down to Auburn. Uh, if he is going to Auburn, that would be a big hit for him. He can get the recruits, uh, and he will be able to pull those recruits, and he would definitely be a bigger thorn in Lane Kiffin's. I mean, he'll be a bigger thorn in, in Nick Saban's ass. So, um, you know, congratulations to uh, – Sam Pittman in Arkansas, they did their thing. Uh, not the great, not the biggest season that they expected. I think they was counting on more like a nine or a ten game season, ten winning game season. But they if they finished strong at the end of this uh, season, and you know they finished their last game, which is at Missouri, and they beat Missouri, which they should beat Missouri. Now Missouri is a tough team, but they should beat Missouri. If they go in there and beat Missouri, they're going to finish seven and five, and they will be in a decent bowl game. And then they win that bowl game, it'll be a way to build momentum off that to go into the next season um but as you know wait and see and see how everything turns out for Ole Miss you're going back to where you went uh it's going to be one situation you got to go find a head coach uh who they're going to get who knows uh, there's a lot of cannons out there so you know but it'd be a tough one for Ole Miss if Lane Kiffin is leaving uh USC versus UCLA uh, this right here was a good game man this right here Caleb Williams did his thing and so did um Dorian Thompson man like like you know, I don't know if anybody did watch that game, but at the end of that game, you could see that kid's eyes, man. That kid was balling. Uh, it hurt him. You know, Dorian Thompson, you know, he went out there and he fought. You know, 23 for 38, 309 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Those three interceptions hurt. They hurt. And I think he knows it because uh, you can just tell the tears in his eyes. Uh, you know, for Caleb Williams, 30, uh, 32 for 43, 470 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Big difference. And, you know, that was a big difference in this game. And they won 48 to 45. So congratulations to USC. Congratulations to Lincoln Riley his first year. Congratulations to Caleb Williams his first year. Congratulations to all of them. I mean, they're doing their thing. Uh, 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 you know, big shout out to them. Uh, but especially with that transfer portal. Now their defense is definitely, is definitely suspect, but their defense is doing what? Getting interceptions. I think their defense is ranked, got to be ranked number one when it comes to intercept turnovers. They're getting interceptions. That. Whatever that that scheme that Alex Grinch is running um, over there, Oklahoma, I mean Oklahoma, uh, USC for Trojans, he's doing a good ass thing. He's that that drop zone cover. It's just confusing players, and they're getting interceptions. They are they are getting turnovers left and right. If it's not an interception, it's an, it's a fumble. They're doing everything. And hell, Corey Foreman had his year. He didn't. He has not lived up to the biggest hype that everybody thought he was with him being the number one recruit coming out of his class. But last. Uh, um, Saturday, he did his thing. He showed up and he showed up big for USC. So the USC's clinched their they've clinched their way into the uh for the um for the Pac-12 championship. They're in. It's just, you know, I think it's wait and see. I think it'll really be coming down between Oregon and Washington. Oregon needs to beat Oregon State to get in, or Washington needs to beat Washington State to get in. And either um, and I think Washington will take it because they have the win over Oregon. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely see, um, you know, as all Oregon has to do is win. Now they go into Oregon, Oklahoma, they go into Oregon state, which we see that outcome that turned out for uh, USC. 
for the Trojans. Now, granted, the Trojans did win 19 to 17 or whatever that score was, but it was a tough win out there in Oregon State. It wasn't easy, it wasn't simple, and it wasn't, you know, comfortable. They had to fight, call it was low scoring for them. So, you know, that's not they're not used to that. So you know Oregon State's gonna come and play. It's gonna be a defensive game. I think it's gonna be another low scoring game for Oregon when they play Oregon State. Uh it's gonna be a definitely low, a low one. Uh Washington, I think Washington will win out. I think Washington is going to beat Washington State. Uh, it's going to be a tough one, but I do feel as if uh, Washington is going to beat Washington State. Uh, Washington State isn't no crumbs. They're seven and they're seven and four. They're not no crumbs. Um, it's just that um, I think Washington just has a, a lot better team. They're playing a lot better. They're they're clicking um, way better than what everybody is expecting. And with that quarterback, Michael uh, Penix Jr. Remember, he was at Indiana, and I don't know if anybody's seen what he did in Indiana that COVID year. But he was lighting up the scoreboard. He was killing folks in, in the Big Ten. Until he got injured, and then Indiana went down. And then he ended up transferring. And look what he's doing at Washington. It's looking good. I mean, can't knock that. You know, somebody what they're doing. So he's got Washington at a prime spot to what? Win to get into the Pac-12 championship. So all, all USC has to do is just finish out. You know, beat Notre Dame, which that one's going to be one I'm watching. I'm watching that game. I don't. I'm watching that game. I want to see what happens because if UFC, if not USC, if USC loses this game to Notre Dame, you, their playoff hopes is done. I don't care if they still win their their Pac-12 championship. Their playoff hopes are done. These last few games is going to determine where you go into the playoffs. So if Georgia, you know, wins out, beat Georgia Tech, right? They're in, right? Even if they go and they go play in the SEC championship and they lose to LSU, they still are in after what they've done the whole season, which I don't see that happen. I really see Georgia going 13-0. and 0. After that, it's going to be very questionable. And we'll get into that, you know, later on in some other videos, but it'll be very questionable if Georgia can continue to win out and win another national championship and go back-to-back years. It's impossible. Not everybody can do it. The last one that did it was Alabama. That was 2011-2012. Nobody's done it since then. Teams have gotten back to the playoffs or back to the BCS time, but they haven't won it back to back. Uh, but, you know, like I said, congratulations to USC beating UCLA and congratulations to UCLA. Uh, they did a thing, man, this year, man, with Charbonnet. And remember Charbonnet, you know what he was? You know where he came from? He's a transfer from where? Michigan. Michigan is producing running backs, producing running backs. Uh, so, you know, congratulations to UCLA on that year. You know, they had a very good, decent year. You know, last year they had a good, decent year. They started off big beating LSU. LSU wasn't the same team, but they still beat the LSU. LSU came out to UCLA, got embarrassed, got smacked around. Uh, so you in UCLA, they, the way they started off, they started off good. They, they didn't have a bad start off. I, I believe I'm correct. They went, uh, I want to say they were 8-0 going into that Oregon game, if I'm correct. I'm about to look it up real quick. Yeah, 8-0. They beat Utah. They beat Utah. They beat Washington. They beat all the teams that they were supposed to beat, all the ranked teams they were supposed to beat. Got, you know, ran into Oregon, lost to Oregon, but they bounced back. They beat Stanford, and they beat Arizona State, but then they lost to Arizona. So, you know, and then they recently lost to uh, USC. So, you know, I think I think UCLA will turn around. I think uh, Chip Kelly has that school, and them young men's dialed in. I think he's going to make sure that they finish strong. Now, when they go to a bowl game, I don't know who all is going to sit out. Um, I can see Dorian Thompson sitting out. I can see Charlotte sitting out. There's going to be a lot of players sitting out for them that's going to the NFL that wants to have a chance for the uh, for the NFL. But they're going to finish strong. They're going to finish out their season good. They're going to you know finish with you know nine wins and you know have a decent bowl and you know for the next class to come in and they'll play uh but this right here is a good one for uh ucla but a good shout out to usc they did their thing congratulations on that one uh lsu manhandled uab it was kind of boring in the beginning but lsu did their thing uh but for lsu and i want to really cover this because i know their game next week is going to be at texas a&m they need to be careful i I don't care what nobody say this is a up. This is I, I'm putting out the upset alert. They need to be careful. Texas AM doesn't have nothing else to play for. But I can promise you, Jimbo Fisher is going to find a way to scheme something up to get them to play to beat LSU. They want to upset LSU. That's all they want to do. These two right here, when they play, I don't know if y'all even watch any of their games they play, 
But every time they play, they play tight. I remember that one last game they played, what was it, two, three, maybe five years ago when it went to like triple overtime. A couple of times. So this right here is going to be a good game. I know, I know right now, like the betting line for this game is, you know, LSU by 10. That's going to drop the closer it gets. It's going to drop. I know Texas AM is at the bottom of the pit. Like there's nothing left for Texas AM. They're not playing for nothing, they don't care. But I I'm telling you this. They're going to come to play. They're going to put everything on the line for this game right here, and they're going to play. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to get nasty. It's going to be some injuries. LSU needs to be careful going in this game. They need to play smart. And they need to play dialed in, and they need, they need to get out of this game unscathed, uninjured, and they need to make sure their, quarter, their quarterback isn't hurt because this game right here is going to be the all-tail game for them going into that Georgia, uh, going to the SEC championship when they got to face Georgia. It's going to be dangerous. They need to be careful. This is a game you got to be careful. I, I'm just putting that out there. Congratulations to LSU beating UAB, but and you know they, they put that game away and got it over with. But with Georgia playing Georgia Tech at noon, and if Georgia gets this game over with before the second half, and you know LSU's game, they you know they're going into it and they playing uh, at Texas A&M, and I believe this is a three thirty game. No, it's a seven o'clock game, so it's at night. Man, don't go in there playing that late that late night game. Go in there playing it late. Mess around, get some injuries. That's not what you want for Brian Kelly in his first year. And congratulations to Brian Kelly in his first year. Who would have known LSU would be in the SEC West champ? I damn sure didn't. Who would have known Alabama would be 9-2? and two? Not me. Who would have thought Texas A&M would be where they at? I think a lot of people was. I don't think they thought they would have not make a bowl game, but I think a lot of people weren't thinking Jimbo Fisher was going to do. They thought I think a lot of people was expecting and hoping Jimbo Fisher would have a good season, like a ten win game. But nah, buddy, four wins is what you're going to get again. Uh, you know who would have thought? So for LSU to do what they've done this year to get to where they at, congratulations, first year Brian Kelly. Uh, you know the only. Bad losses is to Tennessee, which now it's kind of looking like, ah, and to Florida State, which Florida State is looking good. So, you know, again, congratulations to LSU. And the last one, about to finish off real quick, Utah and Oregon. This one was good. This one was good. Now, I want to say this. Bo Nix is playing with a busted up ankle. He's playing injured. But Bo Nix did his thing. Bo Nix did his thing. That that last run to seal the game was all they needed from Bo Nix, and he did his thing. Congratulations to Bo Nix. I think this right here is a good turnaround season for Bo Nix. Uh, now, I don't know if he's going to go to the NFL. I think he still has another another eligibility due to that COVID, so he does have a chance to come back and uh, play one more year, plus that injury he dealt with at Auburn. But I don't know. I think it will be good for him to come back. This right here, if he comes back, Oregon – would be a threat. I don't know if he can come back. I didn't get to look into it, but I do believe that COVID year really did does really has given him an extra year of eligibility. And if Oregon, if he does come back, watch out. Oregon's going to be dangerous because if he comes back and you can get Noah Sewell and that other that other young man that's be flying around the field to come back as well. Man, I'm telling you that defense is going to be nasty. You know they got that transfer cornerback. He's looking good. I'm just telling you, man, if Oregon can get some players to come back, they'd be good. Uh, you know, but congratulations to uh, Oregon on his win. Uh, you know, Cam Rising, I think a lot of people had a lot of high hopes for Cam Rising. Uh, like I said in my uh, prediction video for Utah and um, Florida, if Utah would have went down there to beat Florida in Florida, I didn't care how the game would have ended. I think that right there would have shaped their season. I think it would have shaped their season a whole lot different than what it is. Uh, because after that game, I think it was just I think it took a lot of air out the balloon for them. And it was too early for them to react. But I think they reacted too early to it. Because you could tell when they came out, started playing the rest of the games, I think they just felt like all hopes was done for them. Because it was ranked so high. Um, but I don't think they really understood that it was too early in the season. You still has you still had a shot to get back in. I mean, look at USC. Hell, you just you still got a lot of shot. Look, Tennessee, they drop. I think of Utah would never – I think if Utah would have made sure not to lose the games that they should have lost, that they, I mean, I think if Utah didn't lose the games that they shouldn't have not lost, 
it would have been different. But they lost those games, and that right there is what's going to hurt. That right there hurt them. Like I said, that loss to Florida just took the air out of their balloon, and they reacted way too soon with it. I think they gave up. It might not shown. It might not seem like it, but I think they did give up a little bit, and I think they kind of held their heads a little bit, a little bit too long uh, when it came to that loss. But you know, Utah is still a good team, man. I mean, you know, look at Texas A&M. If anybody had their option to pick, who would they rather have? Utah, Texas A&M. They're taking Utah because they're playing, and they playing. They they coming out there to play. Uh, Texas A&M. I don't know what Jimbo Fisher got going on, but that culture is done. Uh, unfortunately, you know. Texas A&M got to have to deal with him. I don't care who you are. You're not going to pay 80-something million dollars. You don't have it. Don't care who you are. Don't care what school you are. You don't have it. If you spend all that so-called money today, everybody's just, you know, the rumors that everybody's putting out there that y'all did spend for recruiting, you ain't got $80 million. You barely got, you barely, probably, probably barely got anything left. So congratulations to Oregon. I don't want to take away from the, uh, their win, congratulations to Oregon. They did their thing. Run game uh, was not there. You know, Oregon is – if Oregon has to play USC right now, who would you pick? I'm picking USC. Even though USC doesn't have uh, Travis Dye, they still – that running back that they got, man, the senior, man, he, you see what he did? He ran over that guy going to the goal line, just bulldozing, just planting him into the ground. And he still was standing up after he ran him over. So I don't know, man. I, I think Oregon's defense will hold up for him for a while, but I don't know if you know Oregon's offense can keep putting up a lot, especially with Bolden Nick's playing on a bad uh, ankle. But we'll see. But um, that's all for everybody. Uh, you know, week the week eleven is in the book. Week twelve is the last game. It's big rivalry week. Um, it's not a lot. I don't. You know, the game that you think is going to expect to win. You know, Alabama, you got, you got the Iron Bowl. We'll cover that later on this week. You got the uh, old-fashioned hate, which I don't think that's there. Florida State versus Florida, that'd be a good one to watch. The Egg Bowl, there's rumors, like I said, with Lane Kiffin uh, won't be coaching that game. Um, you know, there's a lot of them. You got, you know, South Carolina game costs us driving into Clemson. That'd be another one. Can we get the same Spencer Rattler that showed up against Tennessee? Can you get that same team to show up in Clemson? That right there would be the all uh, tell uh, um, for them. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, North Carolina State versus North Carolina, this right here is, you know, it might not seem like a lot, but it is. It's going to be a lot. UCLA versus Cal, you know, UCLA, like I said, they should finish strong. Michigan versus Ohio State, that's my banner. This is the game we're going to be watching. This is the game I'm watching. This right here is going to determine how a lot of things turn out. Um, and I still feel as if Michigan, it's going to be two Big Ten teams in it. I, you know, I – I don't know, man. It just, but we'll get into it, man. I can just see two Big Ten teams getting into it because both teams have won, rightfully so. They've won out. I, I can cover it real quick. I just go, I cover it. Give me like two minutes covering, we'll, then we'll close out. But Michigan and Ohio State both have won their respective games. They both be, beat Penn State. They both beat any ranked team they're supposed to be ranked. Yes, granted, neither one of them had a great schedule, but they have done it. Now you're going to have these two play against each other. That's going to be the big deciding factor. Now these two playing against each other. And whoever wins is going to go to the Big Ten Championship. Regardless if they win, you know, and then if they win that Big Ten Championship, because they're going to be playing somebody scrub. Now, the, regardless, let me put this out here. If Michigan, Ohio State, whoever wins this game, goes to the Big Ten, and they lay an egg in that championship, they're out. You're only going to get one in. Now, whoever they're playing from the uh, from the West, I think it's Purdue because Illinois has just been dropping games left and like this game that they've dropped in Michigan just really just took them out the out the picture. So I, from my understanding, you know, the um, the Big Ten West is still open for grabs. Uh, same same thing for the East. But you see what I'm saying? Uh, but this one's going to be a good one. Uh, like I said, uh, Arb, you got the other games. You got Oregon. That's one right here is going to be the deciding factor. If Oregon, Oregon needs a win. If Oregon wants to go play in the Pac-12 championship, which just that's what they're hoping on, they need to win. They're in the driver's seat. All they got to do is beat Oregon State. You know, I say beat them soundly, get the game over with, and get the hell out of there. But that's all they need to do. It's a 330 game. This is early for them. This is perfect. Play this game, win it, and get up out of there. Um, you know, and then cover the other one is LSU versus Texas A&M. They need to be careful, man. Uh, look, 
LSU needs needs to be careful. I, I'm saying upset alert. I'm picking it. They need to be careful. Uh, you know, some other little noticeable games. Uh, Notre Dame versus USC. This is going to be a good one uh, because USC has already clinched their division. They already clinched. Yeah, they clinched that opp opportunity to go into the championship. But if they lose this one to Notre Dame, um, their playoff hopes is done. Lose Notre Dame, your playoff hopes is done. All right. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Like Tennessee is playing a, playing at Vanderbilt. Uh, everybody's saying this is like that Bush Jones in 2016 where all they had to do was beat South Carolina and Tennessee, and then they didn't. They lost to South Carolina, and then they lost to Tennessee. Um, I mean, they were supposed to be South Carolina and Vanderbilt, and they lost to South Carolina and Vanderbilt. With that bad loss that they took to South Carolina, you're more now you're starting to feel like can Tennessee wake up and go play Vanderbilt? Which I think they I I feel as if they will. I don't think Vanderbilt is gonna get. I know Vanderbilt right now is on the verge of going bowling. They just need to win one more game. They go on bowling. Same thing with Georgia Tech. They need to win one more game. I just think with the difference between Tennessee and Georgia is that with Georgia Tech beating North Carolina. Kirby Smart's going to have them like, look, see what just happened? Do y'all want that to happen to your season? They're going to come out and dominate. Whereas Vanderbilt's looking, you see what just happened to Tennessee? They're wounded. We can just win this game. So, you know, Vanderbilt's head coach is going to have them. Clark Lee's going to have them dialed, dialed in. Uh, are they going to win? I, I, I'm still going to pick Tennessee. Uh, granted, yes, Henry Hooker is out, but Joe Milton – I don't know if anybody's seen his arm, but the man threw the ball 30 yards while running. I mean, and I mean, he launched it, put enough air on the ball, and still got it down there. I, look, give me Tennessee to win that one. But we'll cover the game for the last, for the rivalry week uh, later on this week. But it's your boy, Adrian. Thanks for watching the Creative Notice Podcast. We just covered week 11. Thank you for your likes, your subscribes, your comments. Really do love y'all. Y'all really helping our channel grow. Keep it up. And as always... Peace.